what you might know. I write for uh, Dick Boston, Blood Truth. You know that? You read that? Good. If you read that, you probably uh, read some of my work maybe in the Boston Globe like a year later. They always pick it up a little bit late after we've already written it about a year before. Like we talked about the uh, caregiver issue about a year back in Massachusetts and how the DPH was not helping medical patients. Well, the Globe's finally reporting on it. That's what the Dick Boston, that's what our role is in the city. We do uh, call out the rest of the media when they don't play it straight. And that's what part of what I do every week. I also uh, am at WEMF Radio, The Young Jerks. You might want to check us out every Saturday. We have a lot of politicians. We, like we're doing today, we have a lot of policymakers, activism, uh, both in marijuana reform and other issues we care about. We're both a local and a national show. We've got a lot of listeners. Uh, we rely on, rely on our community, our callers. We keep it straight with you. We're not afraid to be wrong. And that's what we hope to bring today. A uh, big part of this is you in the audience. And uh, hopefully you'll be a part of it, just like you have been through, so far throughout this whole thing. So let's, first and foremost, again, let's give yourself a round of applause from Rhode Island, from Maine, from Connecticut, from Massachusetts, New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York City. I'm hearing people from all across the Northeast here. And let's hear from Boston. Again, Boston, let's hear from Boston. Massachusetts. Yeah. You. That's why we're doing this. In 2008, we got deep proof because of you. 2012 medical. And we're going to legalize it in the state in 2016. I guarantee you, I will put down every dollar I have on that. They ask me, how do you know I know? And the same thing in Maine. Maine's getting it done. Let's hear from the state of Maine, 2016. David Boyer was here today. He's one of the people getting it done. He was here yesterday. Let's hear from David Boyer. And uh, Maine State Rep, Diane Russell, she's been leading it. She's, they're gonna make it happen in Maine and Mass, guarantee it, 2016. And that's you, let's hear one more time about that. Legal marijuana in New England, how about that? And that's appropriate, that's what we're doing today. We're uh, talking about the politics and the activism. We got a special panel for you right now, coming up, I'm so happy about this. Because this is my thing, this is what I like to do. The news and the politics, you know, the edibles, I love, love edibles, I like, you know, seeing people's plants and all that. But that's not what I love. This is what I love, right here, these people on the stage. Because they're making it happen. They're talking to the politicians, the policy makers, the media, and they're making things happen. Yesterday, Bob Lobel showed up. You know how big that is in Boston media, Bob Lobel showed up. It's because of the work that we're doing in this community, you're doing, and some of these folks have done in this community. And I'm very honored to have some of these folks on the stage right now. First and foremost, I'm gonna uh, introduce Melissa Bouchard, Bouchard, if I'm saying it right, First female bar, bar, uh, butt tender in the state of Rhode Island. She's a member of uh, Parents for Pot, who have a booth back there. Great organization, let's hear it for Parents for Pot. And she's a, uh, a past writer with Relief Magazine. She's uh, currently with Patient Out of Reach, uh, coordinator at Thomas Slater Compassion Center, the first legal medical marijuana dispensary in the state of Rhode Island. It's my honor to introduce to you, Melissa. Hey guys, I just want to thank you guys for coming out, um, being here. I know uh, you had to brave some weather, so it's important that we're all here about something that we're very passionate about, this cannabis plant. So thanks for being here and taking the time to listen to what we have to say. Thank you, Melissa. I'll tear a round of applause for Melissa. And uh, we also, have someone that I've done a lot of work with in the past, Mass Band Normal, um, for patients. She does a lot of video work, she does a lot of blogging, she's very uh, social and popular and well, -lo well respected and loved. And uh, it's my honor, she is now the Deputy Director of the Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. Do you know who those folks are? They represent patients in Massachusetts in the State House. They're the ones who are putting up this bill at the State House that has 16 co-sponsors to change the medical marijuana, to make it better, to make it better than it is now. 
to make it more like Rhode Island and Maine, to change the caregiver rules so that we don't have one-to-one, -one, so we protect patients so they don't get fired from their job for being medical patients. Her name is Nicole Snow. Let's hear it for her, and let's hear it for this bill right now that she's fighting for. Nicole Snow, Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. Thank you so much, Mike. Um, it's been like a pleasure working with you uh, over so many years, and um, I wanted to say this entire event is so exciting and overwhelmingly incredible. You're bringing in so many people from all across the Northeast, and you guys are who makes the difference. We put it together for you. You come out and you represent. So come to us. Come to Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance later on and talk to us. Um, we're going to do it here. We're going to change our medical marijuana law to uh, include patient protections such as anti-discrimination in employment and residential uh, protections from CPS. We're doing it and we're doing it because of you. Thank you to 63% of Massachusetts. So they yes, gave us our the medical, medical marijuana. marijuana law. Yes. Thank you. And we're going to add Nikki. Thank you because you listen to the community. We've been talking about this in Dick Boss and WEMF Radio for months and months and months about this patient. We've had two protests, and nothing's been done. And you guys put up this bill yep. that would actually help parents. It would help Jill Osborne, who spoke yesterday. It would help Sidney Gettick. It would help Lisa Cole. These are moms that we know that have, their kids are having seizures because they can't get their medicine. There's no access in Massachusetts after we voted two years ago to get them access. And this bill would help them get it through the caregivers. How is it going? You got 60 co-sponsors. What's going to happen? And what would you feel like right now in that bill? We're proud of it. We're all proud of it. Our patient advisory board all threw in um, all sorts of different ideas. Uh, the pediatric restrictions is what you're talking about. And we're going to alleviate some of those so that uh, patients under 18 will be able to find a doctor to get a recommendation so that they can have access. Because right now, those restrictions are too restrictive and kids are going without their medicine that they need to treat their life-threatening illnesses. And what can people do to help get that well, to the governor, to get it passed? We want you to reach out to your legislature and representatives, your local representatives, your state representatives. And the governor. And the governor. Charlie and Baker. Charlie Baker. And you can sign up for our email list and we'll stay in touch with you. Mass um, patients, right? Mass patients. Compassionforpatients.com. Compassionforpatients.com. Take out your phone right now. Subscribe to that. You want to help medical patients? Compassion for patients. Com. They also have a sign up list out there. Definitely sign up to this group. This is the group that's going to help patients in mass. I want to say something quickly on that. In Rhode Island, uh, the medical marijuana law started in 2006, but our first dispensary did not open until 2013. Okay? So they, did, they said, yeah, you can have medical marijuana, the law passed, but you can't get it anywhere. So we refuse. Uh, as your sister state to let you guys wait that long. We're here to help you guys fight. Uh, one of the things that we did do, actually, is we, uh, in the last days of our fighting, we formed a group called Chasing Chasey, where we actually chased our governor everywhere he went, yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner, his wife, his house. Oh, no, that's uh, how we it killed him with kindness. We made him Christmas wreaths. We touched base with everyone we possibly could um, and let them know that we weren't going away. He vetoed our bill on the 10th day. We yeah. still fought and we won. So do not ever give up. There is solidarity in numbers, and we refuse to let you guys go this long without medicine. Um, just know that it does matter. You guys should really know does. it matters. Let me just say, like, so many times I've gone into these offices, and at first, they're not interested. But then they hear your story. They love you. If you're nice to them, and you make the phone call, and or you show up, it makes a difference. These and all the time, even the ones that were with the cop, the police, you know, they stop moving to you. And I see some of the names that I've called in the past, and they're signing on to these bills. It makes a difference. Yeah. It's, it's about takes relationships. a while. Relationship build, relationship build, relationship build. Relationship build. Yes. Yeah. These guys are politicians, but they're also people. So get them more accounts. Get to know them. Get to know their families. How can we find a way that this medicine will help them? And then we look that. We find a way to get to know them and build a relationship with them. We think they just don't want this because it's politics. A lot of the times, they don't know what they don't know. It's yeah, our job. Them. to educate them. 
Be nice. Uh, who you know, how to work for me, how to work for my aunt, how to work for the 5,000 patients that we have at the Slater Center. We're here to help support with the information that we have, but it's your job as well to go out individually into the community and work together. No infighting, work together. We're all on the same exact team, and we're here for the same reason. So get together with your friends when you're at dinner. When you're not working, you're networking. It's our job to make this happen so one else has to suffer. And it takes a while. Yeah, let's hear it from Melissa. She's doing that. Like she said, it takes a long time. Just because we won in 2012 doesn't mean it's over in medical. We're going to keep going. We're going to make it better than it is. And especially the reverse what the DPH did to us. We voted for something and then they totally changed it without a vote. Even when we get it, it's never over. There's still the feds. The fight will never be over. So mount up and be ready to fight for as long as you possible. Thank you, Melissa. And now, i got to introduce this guy. Oh, my God. You know, he's... If, Where's the federal agent here? There's, there's somebody here who's a Fed watching this guy right here. I guarantee you. Um, he's changed the law, number one, in Philadelphia, in his, in his city, in the city of Philadelphia. He started a protest on federal park land. He, got, he was arrested infamously on, on camera. He was on federal probation for a while. Last time he couldn't come to the Boston Free Rally because he was on probation for this violation. Um, and then he ran for city council in Philly. And he's a wild card. This guy is the wild card. He's the entertainer. And uh, he's Italian. And, yes, and, and he's a comedian. And he has a radio show. And he's famous on YouTube and Facebook. And you gotta check him out. And what I gotta say about him is his next step was he ran for city council. He hates politics. He hates talking to the politicians. But you know what? He ran for city council. He put on a suit. And he went out and talked to people. And he almost won. He almost won. And I, I, I lost by 54,000 votes. Well, he says there's a lot, but he, how many votes did you get? 4,200 votes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the gentleman, uh, you know, he, the other thing about him is the city council thing. He lost, but he won. You know why he won? Because all of a sudden the mayor was talking about decrim, which he was pushing. All of a sudden, he did have a meeting, and just by chance, sort of, but these guys were no longer considered silly. They were considered, let's hear what they have to say. And the law changed in the city of Philadelphia. You are no longer arrested, it's decrim, because of his work with Chris Goldstein from in Philly. His name is N.A. Poe. Welcome, N.A. Poe. Thank you. Uh, Boston has always been an inspiration, new New England area to us in Philadelphia uh, with the Boston Freedom Rally. And what we did with Smoke Down Prohibition was we came up here and we saw how uh, everyone was just smoking and having a good time and being free, and it was inspiring. And uh, you know, when I was arrested, these guys backed me more than anyone. Uh, Dick Boston let me write articles. Mike has me on the show all the time. You know, everyone treats us so great when we come up here. You have amazing fucking pot up here. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's again, uh, I can't say it enough, because when he and his man comes from Philly, last time he couldn't come. The feds, he was still on probation. And uh, he just did a little press thing. He said, you know, we talked about this. What, the other day? We'll talk, yeah. Well, we have well, let, me, let me bring this, let me set this up a little. Um, and he doesn't want to continue to get arrested. He doesn't want to make it his, his life about getting arrested. He made the one big statement, he, he changed the law. So he's done his probation, he's on federal probation. The press comes to him, right? They want to speak to him at the spot. It's not a protest, but what did you do? Well, I decided that since we were arrested at the Liberty Bell and then we all had to be, a couple of us had to be on federal probation, that I was going to go back to the Liberty Bell and smoke a joint at the Liberty Bell. <laughs> to be on, to be a, for them to put it on the cover of the paper. So it's been what a What newspaper? Uh, the Daily News in Philadelphia. So it's been a hard fight for us in Philadelphia um, against the feds. And like you were saying, the feds are something that we always have to, you know, worry about. So um, I'm just glad that I'm free. I'm glad that I can come up here. I'm glad that so many people are out at a thing like this. Uh, it's inspiring. We don't even have medical marijuana in Pennsylvania. You know, we are fighting even harder. So, um... I can tell you, I... It's coming. The last time I'm gonna cut you off. You know what I'm cutting you off for? What? Let's, let's hear it for this man. I want to hear a loud of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, he was in a cage for us. He really means it. Thank you, man. Thank you. I love you, dude. I love you, man. And uh, I, this is, I, I was talking about this earlier. I'm sorry. I was driving by his 
his spot came with my friend Michael Malta of the King of Pod. He passed away earlier this year. You're wearing a shirt in Apo. Um, I know a lot of us know him. I know Nikki and NA especially. Can we talk about Michael Malta and uh, just what he meant? And sure. He's an obnoxious Italian too. And when I met him, we um, really just kind of hit it off. And I feel like a lot of people up here are kind of like our big brothers. And um, it was just so nice the way Mike reached out to me and everyone reached out to me. We spoke up here. And even, you know, a lot of times on the internet you meet people and you get along with the internet and then you meet them in person and it's like, shit, like, what do I say to this person? Yeah. Every time that I come up here, I put names and faces with people and I feel like it's family and it's like, it's fucking great. So, thank you. Thank you. Nick, do you want to say something about Michael Malto? Yeah, Michael Malto was, an, was a warrior and uh, he had a great sense of humor about doing things and I think that uh, having a sense of humor when we're up against such a ridiculous fight on so many levels in America, you know, not just on weed, that, uh, you know, people that are out there fighting and putting themselves in the line and using humor as a weapon uh, have always been inspirational. Yeah, he's good. He was good at that, too. Uh, he was a lovable goofball that everyone loved, and he really was compassionate and really had passion. Um, I'm going to call you N.A. Poe today because you, you are known as Nikki Allen Poe as well. And, I, and right next to you is Nicole. She's also known as Nikki, so, so I, gotta, I gotta keep it straight in my head. Nicole, yes. what, what, what do you think about Michael Waltham and his contribution? Mike, I mean, you know I love him, and this is again, this is a great loss for me. Um, I just want to say that a leader for all of us, but from from him, I learned a lot about family and connectivity and compassion. And you know, he was always saying, "You should do that." Whoever it was, whatever idea that came out of your mouth, he said, "You should do that." And I learned a lot about encouraging people and empowering others to do things that they should do. Like. Go for it. We, we used to talk about that, Mike, Michael and I. Yeah. It goes by follow your passion. Uh, follow your passion. My kid, you got a passion for that. Go after it. How many times do you tell me that? How many, I see people with their arms up because they know, maybe they, they know that feeling or they knew him. Because <laughs> that's what it was about. And that's what I, I, I agree. Uh, Rick Cusick from High Times, he's the associate publisher of High Times, wrote up a big story on Michael when he passed away. And uh, that's what I said in the story. I said, you know, since he's gone, all I think about is how can I be more like Michael Malta? And Rick said, me too. And that's, that's hopefully what uh, we all try to leave here when we're done in this place, is that people talk like that about you, right? Right. So, let's, uh, activism and politics, I love this. Uh, you know, we had Maine State Rep Dine Russell here yesterday, the only politician to accept an invitation. As I said, I, I have many conversations, I've had many of them on my show, uh, politicians from Barney Frank to Gary Johnson to State Rep Rosenberg, you know, State Senator, uh, many, many different politicians, Evan Falcha, but none of them accepted the invitation today, which I was kind of surprised with, because I have a lot of relationships with these folks, and they know they usually do stuff with us. They didn't come today. Why do you think that is when, you know, Dave Rogers, Cambridge, supports the medical marijuana bill that we want. He put up a legalization bill, uh, spies it. Evan Felshuk, they support this stuff. Why aren't they here? Why didn't they accept our invitation to be here today and speak to us on this panel? Nikki, Nicole. I, I honestly have no idea, but I'm hoping it's because it's the first ever and no one knows what to expect and that we've got something really wonderful and unique here Sure. They should come next time. Yes, they should come next time. I agree. That's what They're I want. We're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. Anyone else on that? Think I think they are. And what do you think? I think that a lot of times with the politicians, that they get too close to the activists. I find myself in Philly that even the politicians that will mention in the same sentence as us, they're a little scared about getting close to us because we're like we don't seem sane sometimes. To um, there's a, they're definitely intimidated by our power and numbers, yeah. um, and, and also by going on the record saying anything that might be uh, used against them later. Um, so I find that when we invite them to large groups like this, they sway away, and that may be why. Uh, we can encourage them to come to these, and hopefully they will. They're, they're on our yeah, side, generally. I, I think we might have more luck next time when Bob Lovell invites them. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that's, why it's, that's why it's getting that's into why their heads. That's why he was so important yesterday. Getting into their heads and getting in 
building their relationships and getting to know them and, and walking in, coming as you are. It doesn't mean you have to change who you are to go meet them. But, uh, I just think they get intimidated by us as groups, so we have to find a way to go meet them a lot of the time. Yeah, and making pot an issue in like your election races, like in Philadelphia, the guy that helped us decriminalize at city council, he's running against a former district attorney in Philadelphia, and she had a flip-flop on weed decriminalization uh, within the first couple of weeks of our mayoral, mayoral race, because like, okay, only 4,000 people voted for me, but if we could swing 4,000 weed smokers it to vote for difference. the other candidate, so it's funny to see how some of them are starting to realize the potential of dealing with people that look like fucking oh, yeah. Bobby Nuts. I mean, I mean then, it's, it's so true. You know. I mean, I look at my, my show my, uh, show guest list. I couldn't get these politicians five years ago. So, and, you know, we are we are doing things. I mean, on a regular basis, I have elected officials on my own show, and they know I'm the weedy politics guy. So, you know, we are having some success. I, but, I need to say this. Uh, Dr. Omar and I recently spoke at the Worcester Medical Society. They invited us to come and talk. They're clueless about cannabis, a lot of these doctors. Uh, they don't know, they weren't taught that, um, the endocannabinoid system. But the director of Massachusetts, the public, public department of health, uh, the director said in front of all the doctors how in support of the program he was, but that he couldn't say that on the record. Um, so just so you guys know, there's so much, I don't know, Dr. Omar, if you remember, but there's so much vacuum politics going on that once we got in the room with his peers, he felt comfortable because he trusted them enough to not say that he was in support of this program. But he recognized and realized what a mess they had made, and it was hard for them to undig themselves from that mess. So it's basically up to us to show them this is what's going to work and push our agenda because they really are clueless, but they're in agreement with us, so we just need to show them how it's done. Yeah, that's so true. They, they usually don't know what's But he didn't say that off the record. They, they really don't. It's a mess. It's a mess. Okay. Um, but we could, let's talk about this medical marijuana bill. Does everyone support it here? I know N.A. Pope may not know enough about it because we're Philly, so I'm going to give them a pass. Nicole, I know you support it, right? Yes, of course. Well, what do you tell people? Why should they call? I mean, we've already talked about it, but give us your pitch why this bill is so good, why people should call. This bill is so good and it's so important because actual patients put it together. So their needs have been met in this bill. And um, it was an incredible uh, thing to see over the end of last year. Everybody threw in what they needed. They wanted residential protections. They wanted employment protections. Employment protection. How, how many medical marijuana patients here, legal, do you want to lose a job over, over your car? No. This bill would stop that. This bill would protect you. Keep going, Nikki. Um, oh. Kids protections from CPS. Oh, yeah. You don't want to lose your kids over it, right? Or the transplants. Insurance. You get a transplant. You, right? Yeah. Um, some people are uh, so debilitated that they need assistance delivering their medication. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're laid up, you might need someone to help you medicate. We have uh, patients with ALS that have contributed to this bill. Yeah, we know Steve Sally has ALS. He's famous now. He's a great person. Um, but he deserves his medicine, Steve Sally. Now, let's hear it for Steve Sally. You guys know him? Yeah. He has ALS. He comes he, out to the state. He, he helped you put that on there, didn't he? Yes, yeah. he put that on our thing. So medical patients are making this bill, this law, and they want to make a better law in Massachusetts. We need to call these reps, state senators, the governor, and educate them on why we need protection. We passed the law, let's make it better. And we need them, we need the, and the Baker administration to talk to us. Yeah. We need the Department of Public Health to talk to us. Yeah. What no yes, one we realizes is that the patients haven't been at the table in any part of this process. Yeah, they've been left out. Patients have been left out. Patients until until now, out. this bill, your group is the only one actually working with patients on this. Okay. So support MPAA, Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. Let's hear it for them right now. For the work they're doing. And, uh, we, you know, question and answer, like legalization, let's ask about that first. Massachusetts legalization, is there, you guys all agree it's going to happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I hope so. Yeah, you hope so. <laughs> Count on it. Um, why don't we do question and answer, though? I know the audience must have. Last time we ran out of time, we already have a question. Why don't you uh, come up?
come on up, gentlemen, and ask a question. Come on up, come on up, all the way up. Love you, love you, sir. Is that Bob Molly? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna ask you a question. First of all, I want to know your name and what town are you from? Are you from? Where are you from? Are you from? What state? Massachusetts. And your name? Oh, uh, Will Snyder. Will Snyder from Massachusetts. All right, so you're gonna have a, I'm sure, a good Massachusetts question. Me? Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess I, guess I got two questions. Uh, the first uh, question is, what do you think the, the Massachusetts Medical Marijuana Protection Bill that's in the State House now, what do you think the chances are will pass this legislative session? Well, you, I'll have Nicole start, yes. We presented the bill, and it hasn't gone to committee yet, so we're waiting for the committee to be selected uh, that will hear it. We are hoping that it will be the Judiciary Committee, uh, because Which committee? the Judiciary Committee, judiciary, okay. or the Joint Judiciary Committee, because, Mike, as you know, our bills have been put up in front of the public health and safety. Which is the bad people, the police state people. Which is, when we, when we had our bill in the hearing, uh, the chairperson would elect that the, the bill go to study, and that's where it's at. Yeah, they would kill it. They, they, would, they would let it come out of the committee. So, we're hoping it goes to the judiciary. My answer is, this bill has a better chance than I thought. Because 16 people co-sponsored, and you know how that happened? They didn't just wake up and decide, oh, I'm going to support medical marijuana. It's because Ned Nicole and her organization and the community started contacting their reps. I had friends on my show, we contacted our reps, and our reps are on that list, they co-signed it. So, my answer on this is, I don't know at this point, you know why? Because I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to make the decision. If you make that call on Monday morning, if you keep calling and keep emailing and keep being polite, every single one of you in Massachusetts has a state rep and a state senator and a governor. They need to know who you are, like they know me. I call, they're like, oh, Mike Cann's calling again. What's up, Mike Cann? How you doing? You must be happy right now. Things are going pretty good, but uh, I, I'm almost there, but uh, that's what they say to me. That's a conversation you need to have with them. So, will it pass? It's up to you. What do you think? I think if we're all active and uh, we all keep sharing our support and uh, keep fighting and uh, I think it's it's all we're all going to win. But uh, I have another question for the guy at the end. I'm going to say one more thing on that. Um, and again, I'm not just blowing smoke. I really mean this because in the past we had no chance. We, we would fill the room. We filled the room year after year after year. We had no chance. The media was against us, every politician was against us. It's not like that anymore. We are so close. If you make that call, it will happen. So do it. Make, make it happen. Let's hear it. Yeah. Who knows going to call? Let's hear it for them, too. Let's start with another break. break the camel's back. It does break. Thank you. All right. Uh, shift it over to the Keystone State. Uh, last legislative session, the Pennsylvania State Senate, I believe, passed a medical marijuana bill. And uh, the governor at the time was opposed to it, but your new governor, who ran on a campaign platform of allowing medical marijuana, who's now in office, which says he'll sign it into law. So I, I assume the state senate will pass it again. It's all about that state household that's uh, a little bit more conservative. Uh, what's the status on that? Yeah, well, what's crazy is, in general, if you give the people a chance to speak, all the marijuana laws that have passed via ballot initiative is because you have direct democracy, where people can say, we want weed, we want to vote on this. And uh, Pennsylvania, we're cornered with all these committees. Uh, we're really up Shit's Creek there. Uh, we started with 45 conditions for the bill, and behind closed doors, a bunch of senators that are not fucking doctors decided to knock it from 45 conditions down to 10 conditions and exclude AIDS, uh, which is kind of just like stuff the lack of compassion. I mean, even the places that have really tight bills, I mean, like, you're dying of AIDS, you know, like, you should be able to smoke weed. So, it's actually uh, very frustrating. There's no whole plant cannabis, there's no cultivation, there is no um, vaporization, it's gonna be like CBD oils and all that shit. So, I don't even know what to do. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move to Rhode Island. Yeah, old man, old ass, come to Boston. No, Rhode Island. Uh, all right, you like Rhode Island, Bobby Knox, tell you? <laughs> well, there is a I gotta say hello to, like, again, to Maine State Rep, Diane Russell. She's the only politician. She's here on the second day. We love her. Love you, Diane. Thank but, you. But the last thing I, I, I gotta tell you, Diane, I, I have family that moved up to 
Maricuana. My Uncle Jim, very successful, he loves you. I got family in Maine voting for you. I'm Mike, and I, I just hate saying it, but I will reiterate about calling the politicians. Like, we had a business meeting in Philly the other night, and people from all walks of lives, people that own suits and that have credit cards, they all came out to this meeting, and uh, they wanted to be involved in trying to legalize marijuana. And I was like, look, you are the people that need to call the representatives. I don't have a bank account. I don't have a job, okay? You have, you know, influence in-, in, in Is that kind of your role to get- Well, you, I mean, like- you, you, like, your role, honestly, you, you, you do, you get people out. You get people involved in this. Isn't that kind of what you do? I was talking to Nikki before this, and we have a great choir built for this. What we have to do is reach out and build a congregation of people that even if they don't use marijuana or you know like it, you know that, that they realize that a you know it helps people and that b economically you can regrow our economy. I mean you can't outsource growing weed to India, so we could essentially get everyone to start growing their states, states' rights, building it up. And I think that uh, that would be a good thing. I mean I think it's a it's a dream. I, I want to get to dream. I want to yeah. Uh, you brought something very. Uh, you got Bobby here. Real quick, do we need, like, when we do pass laws, do we need more regulation? Um, do we need more grows? In Mass, it seems we need more grows. Do you, uh, do you all support more grows, home grow? I think people should be able to grow their own marijuana, and then you can, like, if you're really fucking good at it, hook it up. And if, Thank you. And if you're not, I'm sorry. Do we, what was the question? Do we need more home grows? Yeah, more home grows. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Every patient should be growing for themselves. Melissa. So no one should ever tell you that you because of some weird hardship that you have to go to a dispensary. I work at a dispensary. You work at a dispensary? We are but an option. You should always be able to grow your Excellent. Medicine. I'd love to hear that. Let's hear it for someone who works at a dispensary. She supports yeah. more growth. We should have more growth. We should have more choice. And then uh, some. Does everyone agree here? I heard the applause. Hand. How many people think that we're over-regulating and we need more growth for patients? And everybody. More growth. We support more growing. Anyone against more growing or home cultivation? Nobody. Where is our voice? That's what that's what Dick Boston does. That's what EMF Radio does. That's what Relief Magazine does. We cover your voice. Bobby Knox from Rhode Island. He was a panelist today. He's my uh, buddy. What do you got for the panel? I know we all come from very public backgrounds, very different backgrounds. What brought you guys into the cannabis industry, and what, how has cannabis influenced your life in a better way? I'll go first. I'm a panelist, but I'm going to answer this one. Um, mass can normal. You know, I got involved because I didn't. I didn't thought it was wrong for people to get arrested over the plant. In Massachusetts, when I started, it was ridiculous. 15 years ago, you could be arrested and ruin your life and have a quarry and not get jobs over just a gram of weed. And then I became a medical patient. I hurt my back, and it, it worked. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an athlete. I never expected to be out there for marijuana. You're an athlete, just like Bob. Yeah, I, I was a you know champion, Damn. championship like, wrestler. Like darts. I was looking yeah. for the Olympics. I, I had a goals. When I was 20 years old, I thought I was going to be in the Olympics, and you know, I, I was on that kind of level. I was going that way. I got hurt. I ended up with a bad back. It's medicine. It helps. Uh, I, I know. I know. Uh, Cole's making fun of me over here. What's yeah, the deal? Jay. Oh my God. I might or might not be a little medicated. I don't uh, even know what the joke is, but I know okay. he's making fun of me. <laughs> so uh, uh, I actually started doing activist work about 15 years ago when I was 20 years old in Rhode Island. Um, I worked uh, for a behind the walls prison committee, uh, big pharma and the prison industrial complex are some of our biggest enemies. Uh, but I worked to fight different grievances and things like that. Um, I did outreach work. I worked with homeless populations. Um, then I went to Brown University, took a couple classes, and started working with the HIV population. And I learned how they needed this medicine. So um, that pretty adamantly got me involved in the cannabis campaign. I worked in decriminalization, justice reinvestment, um, fighting for right to vote campaign, um, and then just put all my money where my mouth was. Um, it's not working for this center, so um, it provides a point of access for the patients to get their medicine, but it also provides a point of access for us activists to work with the patients and find out what their needs are so we can help supply them with what they need. So that's what motivates me. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, Nicole Snow, Deputy Director of the Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. Yep, I just want to say that I worked for a corporation and I was so close-minded about cannabis and I uh, witnessed my grandfather pass away from 
chemotherapy poisoning. He had cancer. Um, he was going to live for so long, but the chemo did him in. And, you know, working for a company where they don't allow politics discussion and stuff like that, you know, I, I remained closed minded until this happened. And I, I figured, you know, would cannabis help him? And what I did was, when a bill came up, because Mass Care Normal put up uh, one of their notifications, I went to the State House and I met everybody and everyone that was in that room and I got involved, like, you showed up. throughout the campus. I showed up. She showed up. Campus. She decided to show up one day. Yes. It was awesome. And you found, you, you found, I mean, look where you are now. I, uh, and, and five years ago, I definitely would not think that I, I would be here um, helping others to make a difference and I'm really glad to help people, you know, take that first step, that first step that I took to, to make that difference in their lives and in everybody else's. And Mr. Enik Poe, tell us how the wild card got involved. Yeah, well, about two years ago, I retired from the NFL, and I realized that, um, so, actually, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, uh, Bill Haney. I got that one. Yeah. Bill, stand up. Bill, stand up real quick. You see this old man right here? Yeah. Stand about, up, man. About, about three years ago, uh, mm -hmm. I met a bunch of New Jersey uh, medical marijuana patients and advocates, and Bill's one of them. They're kind of like the male version of the Golden Girls in uh, New Jersey. And, uh, <laughs> I gotta and, see that show. And they, uh, they they taught me a lot about activism. They taught me a lot about uh, you know how to smoke weed openly hey, in public. Don't and, sit down, man. Yeah. Sit down. But uh, you know, there's a lot of people from. Let's all hear everybody. You, you got your dog? Well, we, I had met these old men. I, I gotta get, old, let's say, what's his name? That's Bill Haney. Bill, let's hear a round of applause for Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of people that have been inspirational to me with getting involved in pot activism, and I'm glad that so many people from all walks of life, life are here today, and, like, you know, let's just keep pushing and uh, trying to get this done. Now you can see something, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, N.A., too. All right, uh, also, on the uh, whole, when you first got started, how you got involved, all that you've done since then, there's a lot of people here, it's their first time maybe, or they've been around for a while, like I was, but they don't really, they're looking, they're looking to get involved, they're looking to help. We know you can help on this bill in mass, but in general, what advice do you have for people looking to affect some change, get involved, any organizations that they should, Support. What do you think? What's your advice to them, New newbies? Melissa, let's start with you. You're an outreach coordinator. What do you think? Well, Massachusetts, obviously, Mass Can, Normal Parents for Pot, they're all here. I suggest you stop by every single booth that's here and ask how you can get involved. We all have different things to offer. Some like to grow, some like to do outreach, some like to talk in front of people, so don't. Find whatever you like to do. Find somebody here. Get their numbers. Get on their Facebook. Become their friend. Smoke a joint with each other, and I can guarantee you in a month or two, you guys will be screaming on the line. Yeah, that's right what I love, love too. It's, you know, it's people always think that they just gotta like go from here to there. It's like it's the relationships. Yes. Finding quality people. Finding out the people that you can work with and that you jive off of. It took me a long time to find my brother Michael Malta. You know, he, the guy he made me better. Back to him and made him better, and that's what I really think is uh, the key to this. It takes a long time to figure out, but objects in motion stay in motion. So go find, see. Find a few good people and stick with them. These, are, this is your tribe today. Sure thing. Nicole. Well, like Melissa was saying, you know, there's like a huge diversity in this room. You know, this this hemp for for medicine, for fiber. Um, there's there's all sorts of uh, medical equipment happening that I need to know more. So I'm constantly learning, and I, I think that that is what the key is, to stay learning, just keep going out there and talking to people, and you know, I'm even when I teach others or educate others, I always take away something that oh I Oh my god. I, I mean, I do a radio show every week, I'm supposed to be an expert, right? And I'm an expert on the politics end of it, the weed politics, but I learn so much yeah. from listeners. That's how I get like 99. <laughs> they do most of the work. Yeah. I mean, and it's just it's about educating people in, in your life. 
and letting them know that the cannabis could be an option for them. Like I've got everyone in my family, except for my grandmother, who I will get in the last like year to at least try marijuana, either to unwind after work or for their back, or if my pop's got diabetes. So just like taking away like those last throws of reefer madness and, and you know, everyone's seen the fucking Sanjay Gupta special and everyone is educated in a certain capacity. It's just changing the minds of million, you know, middle America and uh, making them realize that, look, there's some reason that this will be good for someone you know in your life, even if it's just the fact that uh, your city is cleaner because it has fucking money now because it's taxing and regulating, so, or the schools. So just try to change some minds and uh, share your grass, I guess. Is, there, is anyone counting how many times any polls dropped that form today? I did not break my record, which was like... I had over the 30 and I told him he'd be good today. The, the answer is NFL. <laughs> he can't help himself. That's why I call them the live wire. It's a wild card. But you gotta have them. You gotta have the NFL. Love, love you, NFL. I love you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I'd like to uh, challenge all you guys to practice what I call random act of normalization every single day. When you go out in public, I don't think you thought this guy with the white sweater on uh, like cannabis so much. You may not approach him in a supermarket, but you uh, this is a common link, a common bond. There's not many degrees of separation when it comes to cannabis. So I challenge each and every one of you guys to go out into your communities and approach somebody. Be comfortable smelling like cannabis. Go out and push those boundaries and go out and practice a random act of normalization every single day and bring this up to somebody that you haven't already talked to it about. Yeah, try the cannabis lube. I think there's a cannabis lube out there. Try that. Yeah, cannabis rocks. Try that. Fucking rocks. I'm sorry. That'll change lives. Awesome. Uh, we have some more people who have questions and comment. Uh, your name, oh wait, he's wearing a Chi Chi Chomp thing green. I like that. That's nice. Yeah. They got a normal thing. So you're, you're at the, uh, your name and city or town where you're from? Bedford, Mass. Bedford, Mass. And say the name again. Connor's for veteran. Are they, are they, what, what are you guys having a private conversation? This is too funny. We, we got a question here. We got a commentary. We're using all of our opportunities about they, activism they're for us, They're too. doing what they said they were going to do. So Connor for Bedford. I love it. When, they, when they're so hot, they got to talk to each other, which is good. This is what we wanted. Uh, Connor, what, what's the question for our panel or comment you have for them? I just want to say, uh, I was hit by a truck about uh, five years ago. And everything I went through, the, I don't know, can, cannabis helped me with everything. The waking up from a coma, uh, all the broken bones, the nerve damage, the drug addiction. It, 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 healed, it healed my soul and it can heal this nation. Wow, let's hear it for Do you want to talk about it? Thank you, Connor. Thank you. That's what we're talking about Thanks, today, right? Yeah. Thank you, Connor. I want to give you a shirt later. Make sure you come find me. 